Good evening. <clears throat> uh, by way of announcement uh, today, we're going to be starting with a canter, is that correct, Brenda? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's difficult, of course, for a congregation to sing. So we'll be doing what parts we can. Uh, also, we will be having a lector. Uh, now, for those of you who are at home watching the video, uh, which will be posted, he, she does it by, what, about 10 tomorrow. Uh, we had not exactly figured out about the lector's microphone. So Adam Butler is running the camera. He's going to turn me off, <laughs> and we'll see if you at home can hear the first two readings, just the ambient from the speakers. Uh, if that doesn't work, Laura Dobson, who does the editing. She'll figure that out this weekend, and we'll make some other provisions next weekend. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves for these mysteries. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no cause besides you who have the care of all, that you may show you have not unjustly condemned, for your light is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things means obedience to all. For you show your light the perfection of your power is this belief. And in those who know you, who rebuke to merit. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much obedience you govern us, for the power of every will attends you. And you talk with people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children a good ground for hope that you would protect repentance for the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went away. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. <clears throat> the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. In this gospel passage, Jesus tells two more parables, which I will not be dealing with. But then after those two, he gives his own explanation of this one about the weeds in the field. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. <clears throat> his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. <clears throat> the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, 
where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. The two short parables in the middle there uh, are also two very good ones. Well, who am I to compliment Jesus on his parables? Of course they're very good ones. Uh, uh, but uh, could be, uh, uh, you could talk about them also in a homily. The first one is the famous parable of the mustard seed. And the second is like it, uh, the yeast in a loaf of bread. The kingdom of heaven being prepared compared to those two. But let's focus on the one suggested by the first reading, which is from the Book of Wisdom. The Book of Wisdom is one of those seven books of the Old Testament, parts of others, uh, that you find in the Catholic Bible and the Orthodox Bible, uh, but, but not in the Protestant Bible, they're called Apocrypha, and you usually find them at the end. Uh, but these we think of as the sort of, they're, they're later uh, in the Old Testament times, getting nearer to the time of Jesus. Uh, in this passage from the Book of Wisdom, the author is addressing God himself. All that you need show you have not unjustly condemned, for your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things, and here is the key to what the parable is about, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. God's very power over all things makes him merciful to us. For though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. You see, if you have all power, you don't have to assert it, do you? It's an interesting thing. Those who feel the need for dominance and assertive, asserting their power are a little bit uh, uncertain of it. But God has all power and can afford to be lenient. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you give your children ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. And so here is this wonderful field of wheat, which is the world, and there are weeds growing in it. And you and I, like the servants, would get very impatient with the weeds and say, let's rip them up. But the Son of Man, who is the master of the harvest, says, no, no, no. Lenience, clemency, let them grow until the harvest. You might root up the good with them. Be patient as God is patient. Now, this is not what the parable says, but I think it's implied. Given enough time, the weeds might become wheat. <laughs> you know, that patience that the Book of Wisdom is talking about. God gives us patience, His patience, that we might repent. And so, the Christian lesson for us is, let us, especially in this time and this era that we're going through, realize that this world is indeed filled with a lot of good wheat, but also with a lot of weeds, and that we must be patient as God is patient, and that those who want to be just as we all do must also be kind, and we must give people that leeway that God gives them in His forgiveness people that we live with and people around the world and in our nation who might upset us or make us angry. Pray for them, pray for all, pray for everyone in our lives and realize we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. This is not paradise and it isn't going to be until God makes it so. And in the meat, in other words, the harvest has not yet come. And so the weeds are a part of our lives and then finally what we need to do is to look into our own hearts and say, hmm, there's a lot of weeds there too, you know, and God is giving his patience to me to root them out as best I can before the harvest. 
And remember always that since we would be just before God as he is just to us, we must also, as God is, be kind. Kindness to one another is the fullness of the imitation of God himself. And so let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From the church, and we look forward to the future with hope, knowing that Christ will always be with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are forever. For all nations, states, and cities that they be find in God, the source of justice and the way of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are forever. For those who lives are dead with illness, grief, Despair or addiction, we pray to the Lord. The Lord is our For educational leaders, that God would give them insight and courage as they work to plan for the coming school year, so that students may learn and everyone stay safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is our For the faithful who have died, especially Cecil Burns, that they may be welcomed by the angels into the kingdom of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we ask that you hear these prayers that we offer you in faith this afternoon, the prayers that we express aloud, the prayers in our hearts. We ask you to grant them in your continued mercy and kindness to us, through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered in the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present <clears throat> to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. This Mass is ended.